Hello everyone, my name is Rodriguez Jackson, ex-member of the cult called the Universal Church, aka the Help Center, aka UCKG. Well, let me tell you how I got sucked in first. Um, one day I was on my way to work. I was approached by two nice people, two assistants. Um, I was invited there to come there on Father's Day. This is in uh, 2006. Said I was going to come. My intentions were to go. And then I decided not to go. Woke up two days later and decided I wanted to go. So I ended up going that Sunday. Put on my Sunday's best. And when I went there, to my surprise, there were people there that were dressed to impress, Sunday's best. There were people there in casual clothing, people there in um, work uniforms, people there in workout outfits. I was like, wow, I like this. Come as you are. So no one feels discouraged about going to a church. You know, you got some people that may not like to dress up. Some people that can't afford to dress up. Uh, some people may not have the time to dress up to go from work to church. You know, different reasons. So I, I just felt good about just being there at the time. So of course I came back. Came back on a Tuesday. And they, were, they had this thing going on called the seven signs, the God... Seven things that God wants you to know. Each week, um, each Tuesday, it tells something different. And I was like learning each week. Um, come down to like the seventh sign. Can't remember what it was because we're going back to 2006. But uh, right after that, they had uh, an event going on, the seven chains of prayer. Which this was, um, um, I think, uh, every Tuesday or Thursday because they were like strong prayer on one day um, something else on another day um, pray for finances on Monday anyway I started attending more and more so at this particular time I might have been going three days a week and up going four days a week I was just really enjoying myself I was enjoying the place and so um um I did the seven chains of prayer. Um, that was, you pray for something that you want from God, um, something that you want to happen, uh, a financial blessing, or whatever. And I prayed for two things. One, one, one was to get off parole, because I had 24 years parole. And the other, I don't wish to talk about this time, but, so what had happened is after that, chain of prayer seven weeks um, and at this time I had been on parole for about I think nine months of the 24 years that I was given and I um, the very next day after the seven week seven sound um, the chain of prayer I got a call from my parole so I was wondering why was calling me early with my day to see him. I think I was seeing him like on Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday or something. At first I used to see him three days a week, take yawns three days a week. It was going to be a headache. But anyway, um, so when I went to see him, he said, um, I called you early because your parole has been terminated. I'm looking at him and my heart's racing. I'm just like, what did I do? Like, I'm going to prison? Because <laughs> I'm like, terminated. So then he said, I don't know why, but you're no longer on paper anymore. Your parole's been terminated. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm happy that I'm free. And I'm happy they ain't going to jail. And so, right after that, I like jogged home. And just like, do the right thing. And, you know, give me words of encouragement and stuff like that uh, because many times parole officers say do the right thing they see the same person come through the door again we're going to be me so I jogged home 
I actually called the pastor and I said, I have a testimony to give. I said, after doing this the uh, um chain of prayer, I had twenty four years parole and I don't have that twenty four years parole anymore. And so, um I went to see him early. Because before I even went to church, I went to see him early. So he's already there. I had to talk with him. Uh, I'm just happy. You know, and that just made me want to get more involved in the church and commit even more. So I started like evangelizing, became a faithful tither. I'm talking about I'm, getting, I'm tying off my paycheck. And if somebody gave me money, I don't care if it was a dollar or, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a 10 cent. I was tying off that. So, um, and just um, saving souls and bringing people there. And people that I knew they had problems walking up to people on the street. I was able to talk to them and tell them, you know, a lot of my story, you know, saying where that came from and how I ended up, you know, going to prison and um, getting that much time on parole and stuff like that. Because, um, you know, I, I also had a thing that I was, um, you know, because growing up, you know, my, my dad had to work three blocks from me and wasn't really in my life. So, you know, us as men, we don't have our father in our lives. We act out, you know, go sell drugs and do things. We don't have the guidance. We don't have nobody to show us. So I didn't have that. So I ended up going out doing things like that. And when I when it finally caught up to me and I ended up doing time for it, I just went, I didn't want to speak to my dad. Mom was like, Dad, won't come see you. I was like, I won't see him. So because I was like, if he didn't, wasn't saying me, I only worked, and he only worked three blocks from me. And at this time, I'm like 20 years old. What's the sense of him coming now while I'm incarcerated? So I didn't see him for, and for a lot of years, almost nine years. And um, it was on my mind to go see him and and um, you know, just try to see where we can go in life um, as I got older. So one of the first places I went, I think within three or four days after I was uh, released was up to his job. He said when he saw me, he thought I came to kill him. <laughs> it was funny. I was like, nah. So, because you have to let go of grudges, that's one thing I do know, when you are in the faith, in order to receive all your blessings. So, I had already did that before I was coming to the Universal Church. So, I just wanted to, you know, because we still was having bumps in the road throughout, you know. Um, anyway. So, um, uh, that Sunday... Uh, fast forward that Sunday um, I came and gave my testimony and what was crazy about it was it was everybody going up giving their testimony the blessings they received and different things like that and when I gave my testimony there was this lady she had to be she's very very small and petite she manifested with demonic spirits and was throwing assistance all around the place and pastor had to get her and oh my goodness like it scared me and it looked like she was looking at me or maybe I just thought that and I'm like wow I gave my testimony and then it's, it's happening lady break out with like the exorcist so I'm, I'm, I'm happy and a little scared at the same time and you know so I continue to go and bring people there, you know. So um, I end up bringing my other little brother there, and he had been going through some things. I can't like go in detail of everyone's story until I like got full permission. I just want you know to keep people's. I don't want to put be put business all the way out there. But yeah, I brought him there and things he was going through and started to help him and then he was gone 
um, fighting strong with me. Um, my dad was getting sick from something. Sound like he bought a cough long enough because we started spending more time together. Got him there. He he loved it there. But my mom there. Mom been going through things for years, you know. And she started getting better. And I, I'm going to go in detail about that story pretty soon. And um, I brought another um, two of my female friends there. And, um, you know, the pastor spoke of things that they were going through. And they thought I told them. But it was just that powerful. So whatever they were doing there, I was like, this is working. These people are powerful. You know, I've seen people get healed from diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, and so many other diseases and miracles happening in there. Um, that I, I brought one of the first guys I brought that I knew they had AIDS because um, he was incarcerated with me and he took the you know the cocktail drug so I kind of knew I invited him but he came for like the, all the wrong reasons so it didn't work out the way it should have um, fast forward I brought someone else there that him and his wife had um, deadly disease and only I knew about it so as soon as they sat down, the pastor walked over straight to him and said, this man is sick. Uh, his wife walked over to her. They praying for them doing deliverance. And she manifests with uh, demonic spirit, you know, speaking in those dark voices and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, it was scary. But um, they started coming, you know, here and there. So um, fast forward, I, I was just bringing many people there, and I'm seeing so many other people like, you know, demonic spirits are on them, jumping off from one lady had been suffering from all these different um, uh, some kind of sickness she had in her body that caused her to have blood clogs or. Uh, eternal bleeding, different things going on with her body. And when she manifested with a demonic spirit, um, it said that it got on her through ex-boyfriend, put uh, witchcraft on her. And she was from like Jamaica or something. And they cast that off. Then she got better and healed from that sickness. Um, it was another lady. She was Jamaican she opened a Bible manifested with like three or four different spirits and it was so scary it's like her body was like bent and whew, I mean wow mm. <clears throat> too much detail at this time but yeah and I just started to see more and more people coming in boom one girl couldn't speak no more her body manifested with a spirit and she couldn't speak and it was just like throwing her all around the floor, like rolling her up and down. And I started to see more and more stuff. It was a guy came, him and his wife and the kids and all that. And the spirit manifested out of him and they kept saying negative, negative, and deep voice, negative, uh, anger and whatever, you know. And that was scary. It was just like, uh, and most time when people, they were manifesting, they'd be like, unconscious and eyes closed and it's just like taking over their body so it was like weird and scary at the same time and you know as time went on I'm there and um, they had to do things that I'm turning a blind eye to because I'm receiving blessings I had several friends family members uh, in the ICU some of these saying we're, we're gonna make it, might as well uh, plan their funerals. And I was told by Universal Church to bring a piece of their clothing. Or if you are blood relatives, we can pray through you and heal them. Make a long story short, it worked. So 
I just became more committed and turned a blind eye to other things like taking the rose home, keeping it in your house for seven days, bring it back so they can burn it, uh, put a ribbon, a ribbon on your arm for seven days, bring it back, and they burn that. Um, they had this thing called the Campaign of Israel, where you put um, cut a piece of your hair, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in an envelope, and write your problems, your dreams, um, you know, you, whatever it is that you want from God, you know, your problems down at the same time on two, you know, separate pieces of paper. And you put that in the envelope and they burn it and you don't burn the money, you put money in there too if you're supposed to put money in there too. And this was done, the campaign of Israel was done every June and December. Which I think is probably still the date now. Universal Church, uh, they're located all over. Uh, many of them get closed down due to complaints about the witchcraft and the, you know, constant begging for money. So it's usually, it's, it's from the U.S. all in many different countries. It's usually between 200 to 500 branches. Um, I'm just trying to sum the story up. I'm not trying to make it like too long. I want to make sure you get a lot of the, out of this. Uh, so, fast forward. I just turned a blind eye to a lot of stuff like that. And if I didn't already talk about this part, because the video had cut off before, so I'm just keeping track of the time of the video. Um, this part here was um, I invited one of my brothers who was three weeks, he's three weeks younger than my other brother. And they had an event going on where you wrote down your problems, you gave it to the assistant, they took and put it in this bag, and they took the whole bag and they put it in the fire and they lit it on fire. So my brother was like, why should I do that? And I said, don't worry, God's going to bless you. He's going to take care of it. And he said, I got to write my name on that paper? I said, no, just write down your problems. And God gonna take care of it. So whatever he wrote down, when they put that paper in the on that grill and lit it on fire, his whole body was shaking like he was in an electric chair, and he was unconscious. Well, at least his eyes were closed. He couldn't open them. It scared me too, cause he was like right beside me, and his body was like shaking. I'm talking about like he was getting electrocuted. And so, uh, right after that, my brother told me, he said, I ain't never going back, I'm never coming back here. And I said, why, what happened? He said, I'll tell you after we leave. After we left, my brother told me that um, he killed someone. I said, oh my goodness. I said, continue to come because God forgives. Well, to make a long story short, he just, he never went back. And um, he's no longer here. He died at a young age. Um, I think it was like 21 at the time. Um, yeah. So, fast forward. Um, I just had to take that one in for a minute, you know. Yeah, but fast forward, I... Um, I brought my mom there, you know, because my mom had been, you know, through years since I was a little kid, going to different churches, giving up a lot of money, um, dealing with psychics and all this stuff. So even my mom went there and manifested with a spirit, and it kept saying, Helen, whoever that was. And when I got back home, I just... I asked my aunt, I said, who's Helen? And I asked my dad, he like, they seen a ghost. So, um, come to find out, he said that was somebody that committed suicide or something. Um, I forgot, was it a family member or something, but, you know, we're going all the way back to 2006. So, yeah, some scary stuff that was happening. And, um, 
Uh, I'm going to move right along, fast forward a little bit more to, um, I think I already passed the part where my celibacy was broken and stuff like that. Uh, because I'm recording this again. But anyway, I started going through something because, um, in case I didn't already speak about it, you know what I'm saying? Because I had to record this again and the video stopped. It's going back. I'm just going to backtrack, maybe backtrack a little bit. Let me go back. Um, I went to a strong prayer out in New York when we all went from the church from D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Went to visit the church in New York. New York was the night of the chosen where they did a strong prayer and you either got um, chosen by God, you got the Holy Spirit, got delivered from something, maybe both. So I seen um, kids as young as probably eight years old manifesting with demonic spirits. It was like a spook house in there, so many people, spirits coming off of people. And you know, we ate good. They had nice plays, and you know, the deliverance was the last thing. So um, um, there was one lady up there at the time. She was manifesting with a demonic spirit, and they asked the spirit. Um, what are you doing to her life? And they said, I'm here to give her AIDS. And they said, no, not in the name of Jesus. Come off right now. And it was casting it off, casting it off. And um, uh, I felt scared to even go up there and couldn't figure out why. And I said, you know what? I'm not really doing anything bad. I said, I ain't in the street. I ain't no hustler. I ain't no robber. I ain't no... You know, I drink occasionally. I said, but you know what? I'm fornicating a lot. Different women. So I said, let me go up there. And maybe I'll get delivered from something and bless myself. Maybe I'll get the Holy Spirit. So I went up there. And the pastor said, all you got to do is think about your problem. You don't have to say it. When I thought about fornication, my eyes stopped blinking uncontrollably. And then I couldn't see my body heated up like someone poured hot lava in my body and all of a sudden I couldn't control my body down to the floor this thing was throwing me all over the place those um, demonic spirits were throwing me all over the place and the sort of pastors, the assistants the, um, the different people of God in the church were coming and trying to get it off me and they were saying do this and stand up I can hear them and so they say stand up I'll stand up and it throw me back down, throw me here, throw me there. I don't know how long or how much time went by as this was going on. And when they delivered me from it, because it, it felt like fire was coming out of my body. Because it was like hot, hot, hot. And I had to look to see if I was burnt. That's what it felt like. And then I felt 10 pounds lighter. And I felt good. And then they were trying to get the Holy Spirit to enter my body after that. Um, I didn't get that, but they said I had to keep working for it. Anyway, I got baptized um, that weekend. And throughout that time, I said, okay. I told the pastor, and I'm now celibate. I'm, I'm now celibate. And after being delivered, I couldn't even get an erection. And so I was like, oh, it's great. I figured it's going to be easier now. So time went by. Months and months, more months are going by. I think it was all the way to like nine and a half, nine months or something like that that I was celibate, you know. Just uh, talking on the phone here and there, meet a female here and there, not really going out. And, you know, the pastor told me if they're not in the faith, then it's not the one. So when I would meet females, that um you know went in town went into any type of religion and they were supposed to be into like Pentecostal church or the same as Universal Church. You know, they're a member of the Universal Church or something. Uh I couldn't find that. So one day I go on the internet, I think it was um I think it was called uh Black Planet or Tag or one of them. And I had a crush on Keisha Coles at the time. 
And she looked like a younger version of her, but a better body. And so, after speaking to her on there, she had had like a boyfriend just there to kill time or whatever. I got an erection for the first time. It scared me. We talking like nine months and went past. Now I got an erection for the first time. And so I told the pastor I was scared. I said, um, I thought that the woman of God had come before this happened. And I said that I ended up getting an erection. I didn't tell him I went on the internet, right? Uh, fast forward. Two, three days later. I said, stay away from the internet. And it was like just me and four more people there. So five people told him. I'm looking to see maybe something behind him, telling him something, or what's going on. Uh, so I'm kind of scared. But now at this point, I'm getting lonely. You know, we talking about I'm, you know, cutting women off if they ain't fully in the faith. I'm cutting women off if they've been married before. Because they say in God's eyes, if they've been married before, they still married. And, you know, so now at this point, I'm lonely. So it's like, Everybody I meet is not the person that I'm supposed to be with, but I'm human. And, you know, the Bible says no man should be alone. And I'm waiting, you know, a long time. So, uh, I continue to communicate with this woman from, uh, the, uh, you know, this the app thing. And let's see how much time I got. Yes, yeah, so I continue to communicate with her. And it's just supposed to be something friendly, you know. She had a boyfriend. He's supposed to be getting out in a few weeks. Um, I guess down to maybe the last one or two weeks that he's supposed to get out. We decided to just go hang out, you know, movie thing or whatever. So uh, we're supposed to meet up at Union Station at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock and came and went. I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm being attacked. <laughs> She done stood me up. I get a phone call. I think it was either 4 o'clock or 7 o'clock. And she was like, I'm at the Union Station. Um, you still want to go to the movies? I was just so happy she called me. Because like I said, I went lonely at this point. I was just like, cool. I go up to the Union Station. And I start we calling around the movie theater. I think the last movie was out like 10.30. I am thinking think it was going to be late anyway. I was like, you know what? I got Avatar, this is part one, it came on tape like early, maybe a few months later after the movie, have you ever seen that? She's like, oh, I want to see that, and so I'm like, oh, we can watch it at my house, oh, that's fine, um, I was like, you want to watch it in the room or in the living room, I was hoping she said living room, so she said the room, I'm thinking I might be in trouble, so, make a long story short, it was the room. I even called one of my cousins. I was like, look, I'm scared. I was like, you know, I've been practicing celibacy. And I have a girl here in the room and watch the Avatar movie. And it's getting heated. Uh, so, fast forward. I had to break my celibacy. She knew that I was trying to hold out life for a woman of God. I fought myself and her. Then, you know, Signs were there. I ignored them. Um, hey, she got what she want and left the same night. Well, I was so mad. I cursed her every day. Went down, told the pastor because I felt defeated. You know, I told him about it. And I said, you know, I said, God hates you talking to me when you're talking about the internet. Stay away from the internet. And um, I made a mistake and I'm, I'm weak now. Because before then, I was also gaining, like, um, um, I forgot the name of it right now. I was, uh, gaining all my spiritual gifts. And, uh, can't think of what it's called right now at that time. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, right after that. Uh, I wasn't strong anymore. So I want to build it back up. He said, don't worry. You can gain your spiritual strength again. So he said, make a vow with God. I got on the altar. 
made a vow, stay celibate until, you know, and I want to get my um, spiritual gifts again, stuff like that. And um, once I did that, I started having more problems. Because what happened after that was so weird and strange that um, it's something called, it's, it's two spirits called Incubus and Succubus. These are spiritual sex demons. Uh, if you want to look them up, go to Google. Um, let me show you a little bit right here. If you can see it from the screen. Yeah. So, the Incubus, it had sex with a woman during sleep. Either dream, nightmare. And... It causes problems. Okay. And let me break this down to you. It rapes a female in her sleep. So the females are they are going through this. You probably wake up and you climax on yourself after having a dream or whatever. The males it paralyzes you. Happened to me. You'd be like you feel like you sleep and half up. It's very scary. It's like it comes in the room, pins you down. It looks like most time it looks like the woman that you are sexually attracted to. So you get up from that, and you can't talk, and you know you climax. And so I really felt defeated and scared at this point. And so, um, I went down to the church. I was like, Pastor, after making that vow, I'm going through this now. And I'm scared. And after that, I developed a fear of the dark. Because this would happen when I would, you know, shut all the lights off and go to sleep. I would um, go through this. And he told me what it was. You know, um... Um, succubus is the one that rapes the male incubus is the one that rapes the female you have to do your research and study on it or I'll talk about those spirits in another video now um, um, fast forward he told me how to fight the spirit and I said what can I do if I can't talk and then I keep being defeated because I'm being raped I'm pinned down and then it leaves after I climax. He said, use your mind. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus when you use your mind. And use your mind and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And so the next time when it came in, I did that and it disappeared like a pack of smoke, a cloud, and boom, gone. And I never had a problem no more after that. So, um, fast forward. Um, um, I had to give a testimony on video. I didn't like it. Because in the testimony, they included something from the past that had nothing to do with that church and he just added it to it and took credit and I was like you know I was giving the testimony of things that happened since I've been there it was also adding that boom I got a job now I was working before I even got there so I just didn't like it because it's like using all this to suck people in I didn't like that you know so we went back to redo the testimony and when we did it, I think they added on what they took off. So it's just like, uh, stuff just started like irritating me as I'm going on. At this point, I'm, you know, there's the, the, the money thing going on. It's more about money now. I'm seeing all this money stuff like, don't this, surrender that. 
Oh, you feeling good about yourself today? Put your A's in the in the in the collection plate. Um, uh, the pastor was selling this book. I forgot the name of the book. This this is one of his books that came out and it was um, uh, promoted in New, New York or whatever. And it was selling for twenty dollars at the time. He said all the faithful members had to buy the book and show up to New York. I didn't buy none because I'm just you know I didn't buy any. It was a two nice older women there at the church. They bought a copy for me and a copy for my kids, whatever. And they just gave them to us. And so, um, anyway, he sold a million copies of that book. Fast forward, maybe a year later, a year or two later. Like I said, at the time, I'm still a faithful tire and all that. And I was facing difficulty. Um, fell behind my rent. And I asked the pastor for some help. Guess what they gave me? Zero. You know. All oh, church still money. Well, that's one of the ones still. So I got zero. But continue to be a faithful member. Can you believe it? And they continued to beg for money. Um, the pastor came out with another book. And he was selling for $25. He wanted every faithful member. I think he wanted to buy 20 copies or something like that. Something crazy. For $25. Prove your faith and all this. I'm just like. Nah. This is. A lot of stuff like pushing me out of there. So then I'm, I'm looking at everything now. I'm like. Oh now it's becoming more about money. Uh, um, then I'm like. I don't know if they're putting these spirits on me. That's coming out of nowhere. And I'm starting to have bad luck. And I'm like why am I having this bad luck if I'm in the faith. I'm doing this right. I'm doing that right. Oh, but you got to get your tax. Got to get a tax. I'm like, I'm getting more tax now. And shit, I was doing all right uh, before all this. So more tax are coming. And um, then they, this had to be maybe 2012 or 2014, maybe. 2012, 2014, maybe. I'm not sure the exact year. I bought my mom this flat screen TV. It's on sale for like 166. Even if it wasn't on sale, the highest price was like 200 and something, two, 250 or 260 or something. Pastor had the TV, one of the young pastors, because they kept rotating the pastors. Because if a pastor not bringing in a certain amount of money, they sent them different states, like a pimp, pimp the prostitutes, different state. You got to bring, you know, in DC, they had to bring in like 10000 a month. You in Virginia had to bring seventeen thousand. You had, to, you know, it was unacceptable if you didn't bring that money in. They just moved you around, sent you somewhere else. They only get the pastors like seven hundred dollars a month stipend. Um, the pastors that brought in the most money got that plus bonuses and costs. And um, the main pastor, Bishop Edwin Mercedes, takes all the money for himself. And um, the pastors also got donated food, which was from the members us so they didn't have to buy food they got that from us and they sold that back to us it, it got to the point where they were selling like not enough to feed up a small child a uh, three year old for ten dollars and I got so angry that I had a few of the members have a meeting like cause I actually bought the food once and you know what I'm saying me my two sons my girl and me and it was like four dollars for what? You know, that was like an not even my appetizer. So I'm like, we could have went to at the time they had, you know, five dollar meals at McDonald's or uh, KFC and uh, Wendy's. It was like three or four different places at the time they had five dollar meal deals that we could have went to and got something that was filling instead of that. And so they cut the price down and then they cut the food down even smaller so it was just started getting crazier and crazier and um there's people that lost their life savings um i've known a woman that lost her husband because you got when you marry you may say okay you're going in you pay for everything together now your wife is giving up the savings account and all this stuff to them so that ruins the marriage you know 
Um, like I told my girl at the time, if the man, the man is the head. So if the man say no, that's no. So I think I got like seven minutes left on this thing. I'm trying to give you all that I can. So anyway, let's fast forward since I got seven minutes. Um, what we're getting out of there after the TV situation, you know, guy said TV calls style knowledge. They tell us not to gamble, but they're running raffles there. So they, everybody would put up, I think it was like 30 or 50 dollars and then you win the TV. I'm like, I might as well gamble. It's the same thing. Run the raffle for a prize and taking that money is the same thing as gambling. So why are you all telling us not to gamble? So I'm getting frustrated, you know what I'm saying? With this kind of stuff going on. I got to fast forward up a little bit. I go in detail more of stuff later. So we get out of there. We leave. Now, after we leave, it's like we got so many things tied to that church. We got the Bibles in the house. We got different little souvenirs, stuff in the house. So it's like when you leave, oh, something that got to do with witchcraft, hoodoo, voodoo, you got to cut all the ties. So, so um, <clears throat> this happened at, I think, 3 or 5 in the morning. Me and my girl, we had been broken up a few months, whatever. She come over, we had sex, and then um, we both had the same exact nightmare. But we were fighting, I killed her. And she asked me, did you have the same dream? I said, yeah, rebuke it and go back to the name of Jesus. Boom. She's scared. I go back to sleep because I got to work the next day. She wake me up. Why did you have it? I said, yeah, just go back to sleep in the name of Jesus. Now, 3 a.m. in the morning, she wakes up. I hear something say, Rod, Rod. It's in a demonic voice. I turn the light on. Her head is turned the other way. When she turns around, her eyes are black. Her pupils are dilated so much that her eyes are black. And they pop out of her head like a golf ball and red around the sides. And it's not her. I already knew what it was at the time. I say, I know who you are. So, I'm at this point, I'm trying to be calm because I know spirits get strong or fear. And then I know how to fight the spirit. You know, I started watching um, um, TB Joshua later on. You know, I found this church through the internet and learned how to fight this stuff, even though I learned some things in there. But, like I said, there's a mixture of everything and then they twist things up. So you learn it and then things are still getting twisted up at the same time. So, fighting the spirit is saying all these different names. Uh, it's coming back to get back in the name of Jesus. Hit her head on the wall. And it's coming back again. And I'm just like, I'm I'm in my bed fighting the demonic spirit. I think they sicked on me through her because they had things tied in her. And she had made a sacrifice, um, her money, to heal someone in her family. And I think that whatever they did through that, because with this hoodoo, voodoo, and witchcraft, they can turn switch things all over the place. And so fighting this and I ask the spirit as I'm laying hands on her how long you been in that body and it said we are legion and we've been here for over 20 years I said what have you been doing there destroying her life destroying her marriages and my heart is beating I'm scared but I'm you know I'm saying everything spiritual I can say you know, get back in the name of Jesus Scared of that name, Jesus. Get back in the name of Jesus. Fly up against the wall again. Because um, I got to fast forward this side, but we'll go to another video sooner or later. Um, so, anyway, make a long story short, I'm going to fast forward. I got three minutes. So, throughout the fight, I find a way. I get out the room. I go get my brother, which is standing in the living room. Him and his girl. I bring them in. Spirit started laughing and said, ha ha, you two are weak. Smacks the Bible out of his hand. From that point on, I say, we're going to anoint this oil. Me and my brother go in the kitchen, anoint the oil, come back, anoint his hand, anoint my hand, anoint the girl's hand, and we fight to get that spirit off. After the spirit is gone, she was un she, she didn't know she was unconscious and things that took over her body. She said, why are you all standing up top of me? Why did you throw water on me? 
when water came from God. You know, it was like she got baptized out of it. Like, it, it sounded like a movie. I mean, it was very scary. And um, I just had to end the relationship after that because I was traumatized from, you know, I'm not used to waking up fighting among spirits. And I told her, you know, in life you'll find another husband, but I'm not no pastor. And waking up to fight spirits ain't for me. And um, that's my story of being in the university church, that cult. If you ain't never been, don't go. You can find God everywhere. There are millions of churches out here, you know, so you can always find God. Just find him somewhere else because he ain't there. I just want to thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. It'll be a blessing for somebody, you know, for many of us, you know. Because you being misled. And I uh, just want to thank God that I'm still here. Thank you for tuning in. Later.